Last summer marked my inaugural train journey, a venture I embarked upon to reach a destination a couple of states away. After comparing flight ticket prices, I discerned that opting for the train would be more economical. Furthermore, the allure of experiencing train travel for the first time heightened my anticipation. Packing lightly for the brief excursion, I made my way to the train station. Upon arrival, I noticed the station was markedly less crowded than an airport and even less congested than the subway trains I had previously encountered. Boarding the train along with a few fellow travelers, I settled into my seat as the journey commenced. Inside the train, everything unfolded largely as expected. I selected a seat by a window in the middle of the carriage. Approximately 20 minutes into the journey, I began receiving peculiar text messages from an unfamiliar number. These messages purported to be from someone aboard the train, cautioning me to be vigilant. When I attempted to ascertain the sender's identity, their responses were disjointed, consisting of nonsensical texts. Growing irritated, I opted to block the number, bringing an end to the messages for the remainder of the trip. Upon arrival at my destination and disembarking from the train, I couldn't shake off my curiosity regarding the sender's identity. However, no individuals were exhibiting suspicious behavior nearby, leaving me with no leads to uncover the sender's identity. Upon reaching my destination, I hailed a taxi from the train station to my hotel. Upon settling in and unpacking, I noticed a string of missed calls and text messages from an unfamiliar number, unmistakably from the same individual who had been contacting me earlier. These messages ominously hinted at their awareness of my hotel's whereabouts. In an attempt to unveil the sender's identity, I responded to the messages, only to receive cryptic and unhelpful replies. Frustrated, I decided to block the number in hopes of halting the unwelcome communication. However, my relief was short-lived as approximately 30 minutes later, there was a knock at my hotel room door, igniting a surge of anxiety within me. Despite my cautious approach, a peek through the peephole revealed no one in sight. Moments later, another round of knocking jolted me into action, but upon reaching the door, the culprit had once again vanished into thin air, leaving behind an unsettling aura of mystery. Feeling increasingly unnerved, I swiftly gathered my belongings and informed the hotel staff about the unnerving occurrences. After careful consideration, I decided to relocate to another hotel for my safety. Although I continued to receive texts from a different number, I promptly blocked it as well. Fortunately, after settling into the new accommodation, there were no further disruptions. Nonetheless, the enigma surrounding the identity and motives of the individual who had been stalking me lingered, leaving me to ponder the unsettling ordeal. During my previous employment, I relied on the subway as my daily mode of transportation. Residing in New York City, navigating the subway proved more practical than contending with congested traffic and the hassle of finding parking. Despite the intricate layout of the subway system, my commute involved transferring between two different lines to traverse between home and work, a journey spanning about 20 minutes, a manageable duration. Upon emerging from the subway, a brief walk would lead me to my workplace. One typical morning, amidst the bustling crowd of commuters, I boarded the subway. Engaging in my customary routine of solitary activities, often listening to music, I transferred between trains, noting a few fellow passengers making similar transitions, including a man donning a conspicuous black jacket. His presence stood out to me as he had boarded the first subway at my home station. Continuing my journey uninterrupted, I disembarked at my destination the man following suit. A lingering sense of unease crept over me as I traversed toward my workplace, feeling the man's presence trailing behind. Upon arriving, I noticed him lingering on the street, prompting a fleeting moment of concern before I became absorbed in my tasks, pushing the encounter to the recesses of my mind. It wasn't until the day's end, as I retraced my steps towards the subway station, that the memory resurfaced upon spotting the same man among the waiting passengers. Although unfamiliar to me, the realization dawned that he likely shared proximity to our workplace, mirroring my daily routine. I entered the subway car as soon as it arrived, only to find the man trailing closely behind, eventually settling into the seat next to mine. 
His presence stirred an inexplicable discomfort within me, prompting an overwhelming sense of unease. Upon reaching my intended stop, instead of disembarking and transferring to the next subway for my journey home, I opted to wander for a while, hoping to confirm whether the man was indeed tailing me. To my dismay, he mirrored my movements, shadowing me wherever I ventured. Eventually, I returned to the subway station to begin my journey home. Perplexed and unsure of how to shake off this persistent pursuer, I observed as he maintained a distance of roughly 15 feet from me, his watchful gaze unwavering. As we both awaited the arrival of the subway, he positioned himself on a bench approximately 20 feet away from mine. When the train bound for my home pulled into the station, I hesitated to board, convinced that the man would simply follow me onto the subway car, a thought that sent shivers down my spine. Despite my reservations, I remained seated, weighing my options. However, as the doors started to close, a sudden surge of determination coursed through me. Seizing the fleeting opportunity, I sprang to my feet and darted onto the subway just before the doors sealed shut. I watched in relief as the man attempted to rise, only to be thwarted as the doors snapped shut, separating us as the train departed. Grateful for the chance to escape his unwelcome presence, I made it home safely that day, resolved to steer clear of the subway for the foreseeable future. Despite the passage of time, the man's intentions remain a puzzling enigma that continues to haunt me. I once resided in a city boasting an extensive subway network, which served as my primary means of commuting to and from work for nearly a year. Though my residence has since changed, the memories of those subway rides remain vivid. Given the fluctuating hours of my job at the time, I found myself traversing the subway at various times throughout the day. As is typical of frequent subway travelers, familiar faces began to populate my daily commute. Among them, one individual stood out distinctly. I first became aware of him roughly three months into my employment. This man seemed a constant presence on the subway, often near me. However, as weeks passed and his regularity persisted, I found his consistent presence increasingly curious. Whether it was the crack of dawn, the middle of the day, or the dead of night, he was unfailingly there, a solitary constant amid the ever-shifting crowd. While occasional absences occurred, they were rare in comparison to his steadfast attendance. I began to speculate that perhaps he spent the entirety of his days riding the subway. Despite his regularity, I was certain he wasn't a co-worker. Clad in a coat or jacket and donning a hat that obscured his features, he maintained an air of anonymity. Though I never caught a glimpse of his hair due to the hat, his glasses and faint beard were consistent features. During a week-long hiatus from work, an odd incident unfolded on the fourth or fifth night. It was nearing 11 o'clock, and I found myself in my apartment still awake, engrossed in TV shows and perusing various apps on my phone. In the midst of my nightly routine, a subtle disturbance caught my attention. A faint noise resembling the turning of the doorknob at my front door, suggesting an attempt to gain entry into my apartment. Alone in my modest living space with direct access to the outside world, I remained still in bed, straining my ears for any further indication of intrusion. After a momentary silence, devoid of further disturbance, I summoned the courage to investigate. With cautious steps, I approached the front door, only to find emptiness greeting me upon inspection. Dismissing the incident as a potential misstep by one of my neighbors, I returned to bed, attributing the sound to a harmless error. However, my respite was short-lived as another noise shattered the tranquility of my bedroom, the unmistakable sound of scratching emanating from my window, a mere five feet away. Startled into action, I sprang from my bed, propelled by a surge of apprehension. Hastening to the window and drawing back the blinds, I was met with a disconcerting sight, the figure of the man from the subway, his presence confirming my worst suspicions. Though he attempted to conceal his face upon realizing he had been discovered, I recognized him immediately. As he retreated to the shadows at the side of my apartment, the unsettling realization dawned upon me that his presence was unwarranted and deeply troubling. Opening the window slightly, I confronted him, demanding an explanation for his intrusion. 
His silence spoke volumes as he swiftly made his escape, disappearing into the night and fleeing into a waiting vehicle, leaving behind a palpable sense of unease. From that fateful encounter onward, his presence never darkened my path again, neither on the subway nor anywhere else. Though relieved by his absence, a chilling revelation lingered. He had likely been exploiting the anonymity of the subway system to stalk me. Subscribe if you're interested in more creepy videos.